Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. What we have here is some unusual keying methods and I'm going to show you this and you're probably going to say "Ooh, what is that and how is that working and then I'll take you through and I'll show you. First of all we start off with a six pin PD cylinder. This is your standard commercial grade six pin PD cylinder. Now there might be certain times when you want all different keys to work. For that we can use things like these mask pins here and you put them in and that allows more than one key to work. But in this particular situation, what we want to do is we want to have one key to work, uh, such as this key here. Let's make this key number A. So we put this in. Oh, we turn it left and right. Key is working. Key is working. All day, every day, no problems. And all of a sudden, I want to get rid of key A because let's say we fired the, the pool guy or the lawnmower and we don't want that key to work. So then what we do is we pick up key B and we turn it in there. That will also turn the lock. Okay, you turn it left and right, turning the lock. Okay, but what will actually happen is that when key A comes back, no longer works. So we can throw that one in the bin. So now we keep using key B. And it works and it works, no problems, no problems. And oh, all of a sudden, you've given a key out to a family member and Christmas is over and you don't want them coming back. So we throw that key away. We come along to, to key C. We put in key C and we start using key C and everybody is happy, everybody is happy, key is working, lock is working and uh oh, that family member comes back, their key doesn't work and what about the pool guy, he comes back a week or two later after that, his key doesn't work either, okay, so we're still getting around and we're still using our key, no big problem and all of a sudden you remembered you gave a key to your mother-in-law and you don't want her coming back anytime soon so you take your key out which is A, B, C, key C, and you pick up key D. Now you put uh, key D in there, and you turn and you work, and your lock is working again, and you don't have to worry about your mother-in-law, which was key C. Her key doesn't work. You don't have to worry about that old family member that came around at Christmas time. Their key doesn't work. And you don't have to worry about the pool guy that you let go because he has a funky hairstyle and a, and a strange look in his eye. All three keys don't work. So now we're left on key D, A, B, C, D, yeah, key D. Key D is working fine, works good, and works all the time. Now, we can't go backwards, but we can go forwards. So now we've gone three keys forward, leaving us onto this key here. And you're probably saying to yourself, oh, how is that possible? Well, let's go through and I'll show you. So, first thing we need to do is we're gonna take this cylinder apart, and I'm just gonna take it apart real quick. So this is good uh, for certain times when you, you want key planning. Multilock does have a way of doing this as well, which is very similar. And in the long run, you end, up with, um, you end up with a cylinder working on a key. You could implement this in certain times if you know there's gonna be a need to change the key in a hurry and you don't wanna pull the lock apart. You could go up or just basically give the customer the new keys, the old keys would no longer work, and that will be considered a change of combination, and you wouldn't have had to need to dismantle lock at all. So there are times when this is a very useful system to have. Another instance where you might need this is when um, houses are being built, and you wanna give the key out to service people, but once they're gone, you don't want them their key to work anymore. So by having the locks created from the beginning to eliminate previous keys, is uh, a handy tool to have and that's basically what we're doing here okay so you look at all the pins we have uh, six pins there you see that six pins they're all keyed up so how is this possible you see these holes here along the front we've got six holes and we have five ball bearings in these holes so this is what's commonly known in the industry as a builder key type of setup normally the cylinder would come with no chambers on the side so the way this works is that these little ball bearings are put into the actual top chamber and they allow you to use a key which is four depths lower. So for an example, if my first cut here was a one cut, on my next key down, I would have a four, uh, five cut. Instead of being a one, it'll be a five. Allow me to put that ball bearing in. When the cylinder is turned in the clockwise position to the one o'clock position, that ball bearing will now fall into that hole. The top pin will not fall into the hole, only that ball bearing will. And once that ball bearing falls into that hole, when the key returns to the 12 o'clock position, it's no longer at that height. It's now at the next height down. So I've made uh, four keys work this particular cylinder, and I was using five chambers. You can do quite a number just by going through and juggling. I like to do it with a safety level, so I always use two chambers to progress in or two chambers to stop 
uh, things from working. That's just my own personal thing. So now that I've got all these ball bearings here, I can take this apart and I can reset it so that we're back to where we were. A simple method of just tipping them out, pulling my key out like so, and getting my baby tweezers and now putting them back in the top top part of the chamber. As long as they're not as long as they're not magnetic. These ones are slightly magnetic. Okay, so that one's in. First chamber's in. Second chamber's in. Oh, well, was in until it wanted to jump right on out. Is that in? That's in. That's in. I'll show you what it looks like with all of the ball bearings in. These are special little ball bearings designed to for this particular use. Okay, and now we go to our first key, which was the original key. The ball bearings are probably going to come out as, as the, they go up and down. See if I can do this without losing them all. Oh, of course we're going to lose them, but you can see what's happening here. If you can't, I'll move it closer. Four, oh, almost there. One more valley to go over, and we're done. Okay, that's it. That is the trick bit behind four keys working. Uh, why is that ball bearing? Magnetic. I hate magnetic things that just uh, don't allow you to do things. Okay, so there you have it there. Four ball bearings loaded into the chambers, and they work as basically a bottom pin. So that's that's how it's done. That's the trick. That's the magic. And it's not like I'm a magician. Well, I am kind of a magician, but not exactly giving away... Um, the magician tricks but that is how a builder's key is done and that is how you could do a cylinder where you wanted to move from one key to the next without needing to pull it apart if you if you're sending a cylinder to a remote location that might be an option um, if you've got a temporary builder that's working or anything along those lines and you want to set it up for for uh, one key to be or two keys to be eliminated it is completely possible you do need to have the special plugs which have these holes in them if they don't have the holes good luck at trying to drill it I really wouldn't because you had you need to get that precision hole exactly perfect you don't want the cylinder jamming up and that is what those holes are on along the side so if you ever pull apart a lock cylinder and you see little holes on the side that is what they're there for and that is how they work so I'll put this back in now and we'll do it all over again so that's in my key works I can also jump keys as well if I wanted to this was key a if I wanted to use key D I would be eliminating those two keys so once that key has gone in and the cylinder has been turned there is no way to fix it as apart from pulling the cylinder apart so I'm just going to demonstrate you that fact as well okay our cams on the back okay so uh, yeah we're going to be using this one first this is key A no problems whatsoever and now we're going to uh, annihilate that key annihilate that key and we're just going to basically use this key which is going to clear everything and make this key only work bang done key comes in key goes in key goes out working real good no keys a bit tight for the brooch working good no problems this key won't work no working this key won't work no working this key won't work no working and our key a or Q 